Mayday! 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 This is flight 1325! I'm ready to Somalia! We're going down! We're going down! Mayday! Mayday! Don't worry guys, I hit the ejection button. I got out of there. Landed safe and sound in Canada. Maybe someday I'll make it to Somalia. So I started out the video with a distress call. That was what that mayday, mayday meant. It's a distress call letting people know that I'm in trouble. So this is part two of my airport videos. In the last video, we discussed departures. Today, we're going to be discussing flights. But before we jump in, I'll ask that you consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button if you find this video useful. Make sure you share this video with any other English learners that you may know. Social media links will be below, as always. And if you want to join the WhatsApp group, the link will be below also. We have some great discussions in there. So come on and join us and have some fun. With that being said, let's get right into this. So on my last video, we left off at the gate. After you go through the gate, you walk on what is called an aero bridge. And this is what an aero bridge would look like. It's basically a walkway from your gate into the plane. And once you get off the aero bridge, the first person you see is the flight attendant who greets you and takes your ticket and directs you to your proper seat. Now flight attendants are also called stewardists or steward. And they are the ones that take care of you while you're on your flight. So they'll give you information about the flight. They'll bring you food, drinks, blankets, pillows, and direct you where to go in case of emergencies. Now, while you're standing there talking to the flight attendant and she's directing you which aisle and which seat to go to, you might look over and see the pilot. The pilot is the person who is controlling the aircraft and the area that they're sitting in is called a cockpit. So the cockpit is a compartment for the pilot. It's where all the controls are for the airplane. So the flight attendant has told you which seat and which aisle you're in, and now you're into the cabin. So the cabin is a place for where the passengers of the flight sit. Now there are different types of sections on an airplane. This picture that you're looking at right now is called economy class. So economy class is the cheapest class for traveling on an airplane. It's usually cramped and noisy. And another one is called first class. So first class typically has these pods or beds that you can lay in. Very comfortable, very luxurious. I was lucky enough to fly first class twice in my life. A company that I was working for flew me over to Korea and back first class. It was it was very nice, very comfortable. And my first time flying was first class. So when I had to go to economy for the first time, man, it was hard to go to economy after seeing what goes on in first class. So the next class is business class. So business class isn't as, as luxurious as first class, but it is still a step up from economy. Usually business class has seats with lots more leg room than economy, but they don't have any beds to lay in. The chairs typically recline, and they recline by quite a bit. You can actually sleep in them, but they won't go all the way flat. I also flew business class once, and it was pretty comfortable. Yeah, I mean, so look at the economy class picture here. Look how close those seats are to each other. You have no leg room. You're sitting very close to strangers if you're not traveling with somebody. It's very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Now, I've flown a lot of airlines, and one of my favorites is Korean Air because they have slightly more leg room, so it's, it's more comfortable. So once you've found your seat and you have your carry-on with you, you put your carry-on above your head in the overhead compartments. And you sit down in your seat, and most of the times you got a screen right in front of your face where you can watch movies. But you can also check the ETA of your flight, the estimated time of arrival. And there are different types of flights. You have direct flights, which is from one location to another, and then you're done. You have domestic flights. Domestic flights are flights within the same country. And you have international flights. So these are flights that are leaving the country that you're in and going to another country. 
And another type of flight is the red-eye flight. So red-eye flight is typically a really late flight. And the reason why it's called red-eye is because your eyes will be all red because you're so tired. And there are mostly just two types of aircrafts that you'll fly on. A propeller engine aircraft, which is seen in this picture. The area that I live in is very small, so whenever I travel to a bigger city like Montreal or Toronto or anywhere else, I always have to fly in one of these. And they are really cramped and very small. Doesn't seat very many people. And the engines are really loud. Really loud. And I always seem to get stuck in the seat right next to the engine. Right near, right next to the propeller. But I've sat in the front. I've sat in the back. And it's just as loud everywhere in the plane. So another type is a jet engine. And this is what it looks like. Now where I live, often the planes need to be de-iced before you can take off in the winter time. And that kind of sounds scary, and it kind of looks scary. So when they de-ice a plane, they're getting rid of the ice or snow that's on the wings or on the body of the plane so that it doesn't disrupt the airflow around the airplane. So you've sat down, you've checked your ETA, you've watched them de-ice the plane, and now you see a safety brochure. So a safety brochure basically tells you what to do in case of emergencies. So it tells you what door you need to exit out of, tells you what position you should be sitting in when you're crashing, if you crash. Luckily, I had an ejection seat, so I didn't have to worry about that. And I had a parachute, apparently. <laughs> and of course, some people when traveling get sick, so they also provide these barf bags. When you're feeling sick, barf bags are used to throw up or regurgitate your food inside the bag and then you would end up tying it, throw it in the garbage when you're done. That way you don't make a mess. Okay, let's take a little break, watch a little bit of this clip. Maybe you might understand more about what a barf bag is. Oh, it's Mr. Bean. Mm, that didn't work. Oh, that kid looks sick. Oh. oh, Mr. Bean's looking for another bag. Oh, that kid's very helpful. Give you that bag. <laughs> all right, let's get back to business. So you've gotten all that done and out of the way, you sat down, you know where your barf bag is, you know where your emergency brochure is. It's time for takeoff. This is what a takeoff is. So a takeoff is when the plane goes from the ground and starts flying into the air. That's called a takeoff. And many of you who have been at airports have seen towers like this. This is called air traffic control. Air traffic control is the area where people work who control the traffic of the airplane. So they tell them when to land, when to take off, what coordinates to go to and wait. Basically, they control everything so that nobody crashes into anybody. All right, you're off. You're in the air. You feel like you got to take a little bit of a tinkle. So where's the bathroom? Except they're not called bathrooms. They're called lavatories. No, I didn't say laboratory. Lavatory. Lavatory. And this is what they look like. They are very, very cramped. There's not much room to move around in there. So they're very small. So you finish doing your business in the lavatory. And you come out and you see the stewardess going around with a meal cart. So a meal cart is where they have all the food and drinks that they serve the passengers. These are typically free or, I mean, included in the price of your ticket since tickets are so expensive. So I wouldn't say free. And of course, you have to pay extra for alcohol. So while you're in the air, there's some terms that you might want to know about. One is no-fly zone. So in Canada, there were some new laws put in place for operators of drones. And it's made it very difficult for Canadians to fly their drones because of these no-fly zones for airplanes, which is understandable. You don't want to have a you don't want to have a drone hitting an airplane. So a no-fly zone is an area in the sky that you're not allowed to fly anything. No planes, no helicopters, no drones, nothing. And a term you should also know is turbulence. So if you remember from the intro, the the whole area was shaking when I was going down to crash. That is called turbulence. So a turbulent is a violent or unsteady movement of the aircraft. So once the airplane is in the air and it's en route to its destination, the pilot can put the plane in autopilot. So autopilot is short for automatic pilot. So basically the computer takes over controls of the aircraft. 
Another term that you might hear people talking about is the mile high club. This one is a little bit more risque. So mile high club is slang for people who have had sexual intercourse on board an aircraft. Why they call it a mile high club, I don't know, since airplanes fly more than one mile off the ground. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot of new words and terms for flights and what goes on during flights. And if you enjoyed watching and learning from these videos, you can watch more videos over here. And of course, I don't know if you're tired of hitting my face or if you... Go ahead. That's the subscribe button. <laughs> you're not hurting me. You're helping me. Mm. And thanks for watching, guys. Peace.